So that's a that is the process of you putting together. Yeah, things. that's how it works. I sort of use scattered shapes um, and connect them. The hardest part is the end part. Finishing, Finishing something right. is always the hardest part of any <laughs> right. endeavor. Well, a lot of artists, have, I've heard you say it a lot, process oriented. It's right. about the process. Right. But it could be over, you could be overdoing it sometimes and still be stuck without an end result. Right. You have to finish something. You have to finish something. You have to finish so. it. And sometimes for me that means the whole canvas is covered and I'm done. Right. Well, it always <laughs> starts no with a blank room. canvas. Right. So from there you're... You're just putting together. Right. Like, how long does it take sometimes? What's the longest? Or do you? The large ones I paint over usually two months it takes from start to finish. But I paint smaller ones along the way. So it's not, that's not all I do. So okay. usually within a two month period, I'll finish maybe eight pieces. Eight pieces. Yeah. And so, and for me, the finishing part includes the edges. So the originals of my paintings, you can't see them in photographs, but all the edges are painted. So a friend of mine, Curtis Turner, is a carpenter, and he and I came up with a design for a frame that when you look at the picture, you can also see the edges, and it expands the whole concept of where does the painting end and what they are. So this is Look a... This right here. Yeah, so you can see we put mirrors around the edges so that when you look now why at is it, that? But so you can see the edges, because I paint interesting things along the edge, and it's right. a continuation. But okay. when you look at it, you can't see the whole outline of it. Oh. You can't see all four sides. You, right. Sometimes you can see one side from the side, or if, you're, you know, if it's up on the wall and you're looking up, you can sort of see the bottom. But with, that, with those mirrors, so that's our prototype. We finally finished it. Okay. So... Hopefully, you know, I can imagine some of the bigger paintings like with this, uh, with mirrors this on one it. here. Yeah, with a much bigger frame with mirrors on the edges to, to highlight that the original is different from the reproduction. The reproduction. And so, how's that going so far? Well, we've got one frame done and it's going to be on it's <laughs> And it's be on, on the, here we are showing here, it right here. You, <laughs> yep, you're the first one to see it. It's all good. And then um, we're going to have this Open Studios during May, the Silicon Valley Open Studios. That's so right. it's going to be there and people can take a look at it. And, you know, I have so many gallery wrapped canvases that could be framed that way. So hopefully people will like it. You know, you talked about dynamic symbolism. Mm -hmm. Explain that. I might, can you put that like layman's term? Like, what is the most way simplified that? I mean, I. I <laughs> well, <laughs> what I found in art fairs when I take my paintings out is I see pictures in them that I don't intend to paint. Right. Um, they form towards the end of the painting or after, after I'm done. Right. Sometimes a long time after I'm done, I'll see something new. Okay. And different people see different images. They see. They will point out pictures in my paintings that I had never seen before. But when they go, oh, here's a frog, or here's right. a hummingbird, or okay. I see a fish, or an elephant, uh, then I see it. Okay. Where I would have seen something else using the same lines because it's so it flows so much and the, the lines line up in different ways that people put things together differently. So I c that's dynamic because it changes and people see symbols in it. And oftentimes, it's, it seems to me that people see what they've seen before right? in their culture or in their experience. So you know, usually uh, a lot of people look at the artwork right. and they would look at, they would see something and they would explain, oh, this is abstract or well, I use those terms. Other, I so have <laughs> some other pictures that will show that. I okay, picked are we ready with the that? Black one. Let's, okay, the here black we go now. And, yes, as you can see the black and white one. Is this charcoal, by the way? No, this is actually acrylic. This was one okay, of my first acrylic. black and white, and it has some silver in it as well, so it reflects. So tell us why you, d you decided to have no color, just black because and white. Because I see more pictures in it. I see a bear in this one, and there's a line, a horizontal line that goes across the whole painting that to me looks like the surface of a river. And I spend a lot of time on the creeks okay. in, in the hills around where I live. All right. So that made sense to me. And I see under the water, I see fish and insects. And over the water, I see like um, birds that might eat the fish. Um, and other people might not see that at all. I've had people look at that and say, oh, that looks like a city to me. 
<laughs> or mountains. And it's like, well, yeah, I can, I can see that too. Right. But okay. I like the black and white because I see more in it. Okay. And then I have other styles as well. The next one is. <laughs> <laughs> here we are, back yeah. in the studio. We have other. Hey, yeah. How about this one right here? Let's can you get that a shot of this right a, here. A, that has, I call that um, rainbow dancers because I, I dance. Oh, the I love are music. Oh, this is another one that dances. This okay. one, I, I bought a lot of gold paint and I decided to paint the entire background gold and then use the bright colors on top of it. Okay. So it kind of looks like vines of flowers. It's very springtime. And then I started seeing dragons in that one. And I finished it right before the Lunar New Year, New year. the Dragon, dragon Year. The dragon, right? I finished it like coincidentally, <laughs> right? I said, oh, well, this one's called the Dragon Spring. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here we and go. then this one is lots of silver and blue. And I'm going to give you a test, Michael. What do you see? Do you see anything in this? Hold on, give me a second. Maybe a whale or a dolphin. A whale or a dolphin? Yeah, I okay. see. I see a dolphin at the top there too. <laughs> well, how did that happen? I mean, <laughs> I don't. I don't know how it happens. You just. I'm actually starting a research project. It's okay. called the Dynamic Symbolism Project to try to figure out a little bit more and get some more input from people about how that that happens. That's the you know, sixty-four dollar <laughs> question. There. That's well, the only one a, I can't answer. We have the roll-in. Yeah, I have it. Well, let me let me go tell ahead. you set a little up, bit set about it up, it set it up first, for us. Because it's part of a Kickstarter campaign. Okay. And Kickstarter is this great new way where artists and musicians and all kinds of people who want to start projects like um, short film or the first album that people want to produce. Right. And what I'm producing, I call the Dynamic Symbolism Project, and it's actually an iPad app iPad, where, okay. Where you can you look at the painting and you can touch the screen to show where you like if you saw the dolphin, you could show, touch it and say, here's where I see the dolphin. You type in dolphin. Okay. And after you've done that, then you can look to see what other people have seen in the painting. Okay. And I also plan to do animations about it and have it be something that people can interact with and it will change over time. So we're transforming here. We're going from now we're going yeah, to iPads. Exactly. This is technology now. Right. So we're Somebody, so this is a, a different A good friend of mine just told me I'm a transmedia artist now because I'm crossing between paintings, paintings and technology. Yeah. Multimedia, iPad, right? You've got video. website, yes. yes. So uh, we're ready with that. Yeah, so All the right. Roland is gonna be part of the Kickstarter campaign. Okay, if we're so. ready with that are we ready with that? Yeah, Done. We're we'll, ready. We want to. <laughs> oh, here we go. And I would like to introduce you to the Dynamic Symbolism Project. I want to push the boundaries of traditions that say, don't touch the art. Let educated art historians tell you what to see. I'd like to let you know how you can participate in this groundbreaking art installation using cutting-edge touchscreen technology. People look at my dynamic symbolism paintings and see different symbols, some of which are new even to me. We will create apps on a programming platform that will transfer from tablets like the iPad to large multi-touch screen wall installations. I see a fawn hidden in the bottom left corner of Fertility. Touch the screen to highlight the shapes in the image. When you are done, it will be stored and accessible when you want to see what others see. Still don't see the fawn? Touch it again and you can see the artist's vision. Each painting will be associated with its own animations and music. Musicians can invest in this project and have their original compositions featured in the animation sequences. Together, we can explore the ideas I have developed in years of talking to people at art fairs. People from different cultures see symbols they are familiar with. The Dynamic Symbolism Project is in part a psychological investigation into how people connect lines and see images according to what they have experienced. There are no wrong answers. Everyone's point of view is valid. Right. Well, before 
before we go, talk about this piece. Right well, now. this is a brand new piece. I finished it today. And as I was working on it, I noticed that in this direction, it looks to me like a bird. And I did intentionally paint some feathers down here. Okay. Started, I actually started with the silver as a structure. And here's the beak, and here it's flying. There's a, there's a bird. There's a and bird. then I turned it okay. this way. There you go. Got that. And I see like a dog, maybe a Yorkshire Terrier, or sometimes I see Wiley Coyote in my okay, <laughs> from the road Coyote, runner. Road runner. All <laughs> you right. can kind of see him good. right there, yeah, don't okay. you? There are the ears yeah, up the there. Ears there. And then, where is the next one? Oh, here. This one, to me, looks like a deer. So here's the ear, over here's the nose, the face is like this, and up here, antlers, and it's kind of, I don't know, splashing through water. Splashing through water, OK. But in three different directions, so I don't know which. And you could, I don't still, know it's this you could way. still put the Haven't mirrors, right? On the on side. This one, right? Yeah. Yes. So, so anyway. I'm not sure what to call this one, and I don't know which way to hang it. It's always a problem with my art, because as I paint it, I turn it around. Right. And so which way is up? Point of view. I angle. don't know. <laughs> it's always a choice. It's always a choice, right? So we got a few minutes left. Can you tell the viewers out there, maybe if you have some advice for painters or artists in general? Oh, yes. Always take photographs of everything. I got my grant. $25,000 I got because I took pictures of everything that I did. And I had photographs from 1982, the very first painting. And I had photographs every single year for, you know, 25 years, 23 years. And I needed that for applying for this grant. And when I went through my archives of pictures. So a way to document what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, document what you're doing. Don't so let a painting go without taking a picture of it. You never know process, when you, you know. might. You know, and with websites, and just and keep talking about it. Okay. Go to fairs, talk to people. Talk to people. All right. Yes. I want to thank Sally Rain and all her bring, for bringing her artwork here. I also oh, want welcome. to thank our director Nance Wheeler. Yay, Nance. Jared Hogdod. Hope I said his name right. <laughs> Steve Hall, Don Serlin, Princeton Diamond, Lauren Young, Sarah Bennett. Did I forget anybody? I think I got everybody. Mark. Mark. Mark Hatasaka. And Yay. I want to thank, and so make sure you, the website, sallyrain.com. Yes. And I want to thank you, everybody. Peace and love.